Welcome. Now we are going to see about anatomy of DTD. Anatomy in the sense now I am going to divide my DTD declaration into three different sections. These three different sections are elements, attributes and entities. About this we are going to see in depth in our upcoming slides. To start with DTD elements. So as we have seen earlier in our previous examples, we have used the element tag and this particular element tag will just look like this. So elements in the document are declared with the help of the element tag and remember there must be an exclamation mark. And remember one more thing, this particular element tag must be provided in uppercase letters that is the capital letters. Consider if you provide the element keyword the tag name in smaller case letters it will not execute and in order to construct this particular element tag we have a certain syntax to be followed and the syntax is first the element keyword next comes the element name element name in the sense any name that can be provided for your tag and within the parentheses we can give the element content element content in the sense this consider this is my root element inside my root element how many child elements must be present I can mention them within the parentheses anyhow about all these things we have, which we are going to see in our uh, practical session also before that I'm just giving like a s snippet so that you can uh, grasp it easily so this particular DTD elements can be further divided into four different set of categories. The first one is plain text. Second one is unrestricted elements. Third one is empty elements. And the fourth one is child elements. To start with the plain text. What is the plain text in DTD elements? Just read this. If only the plain text is used inside the element then it must be declared with hash pc data in our earlier example also i have used this hash pc data and i said that i'll be explaining this later in our upcoming videos so this is the time for that so what this particular line says is that consider if i'm creating one particular tag known as name inside the name if i provide any other names consider ramu raju anything like that so that is just a plain text, right? If that text has to be understood by the XML parser, then you must declare that particular element with some declaration. That declaration is nothing but hash PC data. So remember, if you are using only the plain text inside the element, no other special symbols like lesser than, greater than, ampersand, no special symbols, just plain text. If you are using that, then you have to declare that using hash pc data and what this hash pc data stands for hash pc data stands for past character data so here the meaning of past is that we think what is the past past is nothing but there is an inbuilt parser present inside your browser the main job of that particular parser is that whatever the text that is given inside the element will be parsed Parse means checked. So there is no compiler present inside the browser. Instead of that, we have a parser or interpreter in order to rectify or find the errors which you have made in your XML document. And this PC data must be specified within the parentheses. So please be very careful that this particular plain text declaration that is the hash PC data must be displayed must be specified within the parentheses and the syntax is as follows so to start with element next the element name comes afterwards hash pc data within the parentheses if you provide like this this is the valid declaration of a dtd element next dtd elements of unrestricted elements category so as the name itself states, unrestricted means what? There is no boundary, no limits. So let's see that. Just read this line. 
if the element must accept all combinations of data in any order specified then it must be declared with the keyword any it means what consider in our first video and second video i said that if i use a structure i have to follow that structure if i don't follow that structure my xml document will issue or throw an error so here if i specify my particular element with the keyword any so it means what when my xml parses sees that particular declaration any even if it doesn't follow the rules also it will not throw an error it will not show an error so there is no restriction of your elements in your xml document if you specify the keyword any and this is second point when parser checks the element with the keyword any the syntax checking is not performed this is what i said if you specify the in our earlier example i talked about hash pc data in hash pc data if you have specified the parser will check that particular data consider if you specify any the parser will not check the data which is present inside even if you make mistakes it will not consider even if you don't follow the structure it will not consider it will not throw an error but it is not advisable to skip the syntax checking before it does to the parser so it is advised that you have to follow the syntax checking so as far as possible do not use any so that your xml parser will not identify your errors in your xml document and the syntax for using any keyword is is as follows similarly just element next element name and then any and notice here there is no parentheses only for pc data we have a parentheses and the next one will be about the empty elements empty means what nothing present inside that's the answer let's say if the element must not accept any text inside the element know that point if i have an element there must be no text present inside the element then it should be declared with the keyword empty consider if i specify empty for an element if i give something inside that particular thing it will throw me an error it means what i'll declare that particular element with a keyword empty again as i said it is empty it must be empty if i provide some data inside that it will say an error stating that your your declaration is empty but you have specified some data inside so it get an error so the syntax for empty element declaration is just similar to any so element element name instead of any you are replacing with empty that's it now about our pc data and any we are going to see a practical example so that you can understand it very easily so let's go to our code so welcome in this we are going to see a practical example in order to understand uh, all our empty any and um, um, pc data in a brief manner so i'm already made a previous program so let's get started with that so i'll just open this in my notepad as i open in my notepad as you can see this the same which we have seen in our previous video the same thing is repeated again it means that the xml version we are using here and notice one point again the same doc tag declaration and here college is a root element inside the college root element i have one child element that is known as student inside that particular child element i have four other child elements namely roll number name age and course so about all these things i said in my previous video and that this ash pc data is mainly used for declaring the element the main meaning of ash pc data is that it is a parsed character data it means that when i provide some values within that particular element any text any plain text within that particular element that particular text will be parsed by a parser parsing is nothing but like compiling so it will compile or it will parse the statements which is present inside the coding and you can notice this point in my 
this is my structure from this doc type until this this is my structure which you already know that and this is my XML content from here to here is my XML content now notice one point inside my college root element inside my student child element I, my first sub child of student is roll number and inside that I have given just thousand it means it is just a text and this particular thousand will be parsed by the parser in order to check whether there is some uh, extra special symbols which is present so this is the main use of ash pc data so remember one thing if any plain text within you have to just specify the text then declare it with hash pc data the next one i specified for name element the de uh, declaration is specified as any the main meaning of any which we saw in our slides is that any can is an unrestricted element which means there is no certain restrictions in order to provide uh, element values here notice one point inside my student i have only one element named name but in my content i used two times notice that point the first name is name david within that particular element i gave one more name that is sam so understand one thing very particularly that there can't be two names since i didn't declare like that i declared just a name so the student element must contain only one particular name consider since i give any this will not show any errors because it is unrestricted so the parser will not come and check all these things if i press if i give any the parser will not come and check your code if you give anything other than any the parser will come and uh, check your codes if you made some errors it will display those errors so here since i nested it it will not show any errors since i replaced with any so first i'll show you the output of this then i'll make some changes in order to understand make you understand better so i'll open with internet explorer when it opens in my internet explorer now i'm right clicking it and just clicking validate xml so it is showing me validation successful now the first change which i want to make here in my roll number as i said i'm going to give lesser than sign now i'll save it again i'll open my browser now i'll refresh it as you can see my parser is detecting an error it means what lesser than sign must not be mentioned there lesser than greater than ampersand they must not be mentioned and consider if you ask one question if you want to mention lesser than greater than and ampersand how we can mention since it is showing some errors that can be taught you in our upcoming slides it is known as dtd entities so as far as now i'm just deleting this and here in my element declaration i have used any right now i'm deleting that any and again i'm giving hash pc data now i'm asking my parser also to check that this particular name element but earlier i didn't ask my parser to check it because i gave what any now i'll just save it and i'll again uh, open in my browser now as you can see it works now but when i click this validate xml according to my structure it shows what error element content invalid it's not according to the schema it means what you have in i'll just go to my coding in your coding in structure you specify there is only is as pc data so uh, your particular element must go to the parser but in your coding there must be only one name element but by mistake you have given two name elements so that is the main reason behind of using any fine so if you use any remember one thing your parser will not check that particular element even if you make some errors that is the main trick behind this and notice this we saw empty right now in my content page in eight section i gave 27 which means that 
there is a content inside h that is 27 now i'll i'll just remove this and give empty that's it now let's run and see what happens and i'm just refreshing it again I'm again right click validate XML and see now parse error at line 16 and what is the source here is the source and see the error text is not allowed in this context according to DTD or schema it means what actually in your structure you are declared that element by using empty so in your content also when you come it must be empty but instead of empty you replaced with the value 27 now consider I'm deleting this 27 I'm again running this now again click the validate XML now you can see validation is successful we didn't get any errors the reason is it is empty when the element is not present we can use that I hope so you understood this particular thing and uh, we can just switch back to our slides fine the next topic is about DDD elements in which we are going to see about the child elements as in our previous program we have used many child elements so from that we have understood that under one particular root element we can create one or more child elements if we need to create one or more child elements we need the help of these declarations known as sequences and choices what is a sequence as the name states the elements which are defined in a specified order it is known as a sequence as in our previous example we saw under the student there was a sequence of elements specified roll number comma name comma age comma course all are following a sequence and if you want to give more than one child element within a root element then each child element must be separated with the help of a comma please do remember this and the following the syntax is element is a keyword element name and if there is only one child inside one element you can just mention within the parentheses consider if there are more number of child's elements inside one root element separate them with the help of the comma as we have seen in our uh, description the next option is about choices choices are nothing but Elements can be appeared in terms of choices. It means for a particular uh, parent element, we can provide two child elements, but we can use any one of the child element in our program, but we cannot use both of them. See, if you want to create the child element with the choice option, then it has to be declared with a pipe character. And the syntax is as follows element and the element name and notice here child 1 the pipe character comes in between and child 2 it means that either you can use child 1 in your program or you can use child 2 in your program but you cannot use both the child's in, at the same time in your program in order to explain this we'll just go to our uh, practical example so that you'll understand it better fine now let's see a practical example for our uh, sequence and choices child elements so I already created a program so I'll just open it in uh, notepad after opening it in notepad as usual from our doc type section this is my internal DTD like we have seen in our previous example inside my college root element I have one child element that is student so since I have one child element I'm enclosing that within college within the parentheses consider inside student element I have four child elements the first one is roll number the next one is name the next one is s name here name and s name are separated with the help of a pipe symbol as I said it is a choice so in your document either you can use the name element or the s name element it is up to your choice but in your document that is the XML document you cannot use both the name as ns name in the same time the next one is age and course and understand one thing as i said earlier in my sequences if when you have one or more elements it must be separated with the help of a comma and separately you have to declare all the elements individually roll number name s name age and course 
separately you have to declare them and I'm closing my DTD section after closing my DTD section I'm opening my XML content section so in as I said in my structure I'm following the structure so college is my root element inside the college root element I have only one particular student element one particular child student element inside that particular student element I have four different set of child elements the first one is roll number the next one is s name the next one is age and next one is course so the main uh, motive of this particular program is that have you noticed here I gave name pipe character and s name so I can either use name or s name both works now I'll execute this program so I'll open this in my uh, Internet Explorer the same file so it works when I execute this validate XML it is saying validation successful now I'll make some changes in my coding the changes are instead of S name I'm giving just name I'm just providing like this now I'm just going again to my browser and again checking it now notice that point in my document instead of S name I am having name so I'll again validate XML so again the validation is successful because either I want to use the name or S name I can't use both the things consider here I'm typing S name Sam S name consider I'm typing like this now let's see what happens I'm executing this I got the S name here but uh, when I validate the XML it says the error known as the expected element is age but instead of age you again gave S name it means that you are against the structure against the DTD so whenever you are constructing the document you have to be sure that you must not be against the DTD so I hope so you understood this particular program so now let's get back to the slides fine the next topic is about cardinality cardinality is nothing but how many number of arguments or how many number of elements that can be specified inside a particular parent element it means that uh, in our earlier case we saw that we can specify one or more number of elements but we didn't mention that how many times that particular child element can repeat in that particular parent element so in order to specify that repetition of child elements inside a parent element we can use the concept of cardinality and this cardinality can be used in our coding with the help of some of the indicators consider if you don't mention any indicator then it is assumed that you can mention only one particular child element inside one parent element all these uh, videos in our previous videos and programs we didn't mention any cardinality indicators so it means that we can use only one time that particular element next if you mention question mark then uh, the child element can have zero or one occurrence in the XML document it means uh, element need not be occurred again and again or at least one time it must be occurred so zero or one occurrence of that particular element must be there consider if you specify star that is the asterisk then the child elements needs to have zero or more occurrences it means if an element need not be occurred also you can specify the star or else or more if you want many elements more than one more than two if you need that you have to specify with the indicator asterisk consider if you need one or more occurrences of that particular child element then you need to mention the indicator plus so now you got one question where we need to specify this particular indicator in our syntax the syntax will be like this first the element name comes and then the child element name after the child element name within the parentheses note that point within the parentheses mention the indicator if you want this particular child element to repeat as many times if you require just then just give star consider if that particular element has to occur only one or zero times you can mention this question mark 
Anyhow, we are going to see a practical example to demonstrate all these cardinality indicators. Fine. Now let's see the practical example of our uh, cardinality indicators. Already I've created one program in order to save the time. I'm just opening it in the notepad. So in this, as we have seen in our uh, earlier example, so notice one point, all in our course are, uh, will be using the uh, same codings again and again in order. Or if I use same coding again and again, it helps you to understand the concept better. That is the main reason behind using the same coding again and again. So inside my college student, now I used an indicator known as plus. Plus means one or more than one child elements can appear in the document. Here I mentioned plus for my student child element. So my student child element is displayed once or more than once. So in my coding now I displayed it two times. And inside the student element I mentioned roll number. I didn't mention any indicator. Even for name also I didn't mention any indicator. But for age I mentioned the indicator. So whenever you use indicators, please mention your element within the parentheses. So here I'm using the indicator that is a question mark, which means that zero or one occurrence of that particular element must be there. Either now I used here question mark age. So in my coding, I gave age in both the students. So it means what it must occur at least once or it must not occur. So consider I'm uh, executing this program in order to make you understand. I'll execute this. I'll execute this in Internet Explorer. Now I'll right click this validate XML. So it's working fine. No problem. Validation successful. Now I'm going to make some changes in the coding. So how to make the changes? Now I said here uh, age question mark, which means that at least one time I must use age in my coding. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm deleting this particular age. So it means what question mark if age is also not there, the program works. If age is there also, no problem, the program works. Now I deleted the age. Now I'm going there again, refreshing it. You can find that after name courses display, there is no age. Right clicking it, validate XML. The validation is successful. So, so no problem with that. Now I'm specifying more than one time in an element, two times I'm specifying the age. Consider I'm deleting this roll number. I'm sorry by mistake. So I'm sp specifying this age two times. Consider here now I'm giving 29. So consider inside my student uh, element, I must have zero or one occurrence of age element. But in my coding, I gave two times age element. We'll see what happens. Now I save this. I'm executing this in my system. So as you can see, I got age 27 and 29. I'm validating it in XML. Now you can see what it says. I'm expecting a course element, but you have given age 29 because according to your schema, you didn't say age must appear more than once. I hope so you understood this. So question mark goes for zero or one occurrence. After that, I mentioned course and I give star. It means what? Zero or more occurrence. A course element cannot be there in the coding, no problem. Or you can give more than one course element also. So in this particular student element, I give three times. And in this particular student element, I give only two times. So it is my wish. If I give star, it is my wish. I can give as many elements I, I need it. So understand one thing very carefully. Uh, here I give plus. If I remove this plus, I'm removing this plus. So it means what student element must be declared only once. But here I declare two times. We'll see what happens. Again, I'm running this in my system. I'll right click valid XML. Now it says what parse error in line 19. What is the source? The store sources student element. So student element must be repeated only once. But in your coding, you have given it twice that that is the error. Since you have said that there is no indicator. If there is no indicator, only one time the element can be repeated. Now I'm saying plus. Okay, you can repeat one or more times also no problem with that. 
so i hope so you understood this the main usage of the indicators and other things now let's get back to the slides fine now as uh, we came to the end of this video now we'll take a small break and get back but before that we'll just revise or just a small recap of what we have seen in this particular video we have seen about dtd elements and uh, the various types of elements like uh, the plain text element the unrestricted elements and the child elements that mean the choices and sequences types of thing and uh, even we have seen the cardinality uh, indicators for each and every element inside that particular xml document so even we have seen some practical examples to make us really uh, understand so now this is the end of the dtd elements uh, video in our next video we'll continue with our dtd attributes so we'll meet in the next video thank you